Abdominal surgery is a common procedure performed worldwide. And in North America alone, 43% of people will end up having abdominal surgery. And one out of every three will end up with a post-operative complication with abdominal pain. And that pain lasts anywhere from three to six months and even longer. For the past 25 years, I've been treating patients with abdominal pain and there's one common reason why this is happening. And so in this video, we're gonna go into an in-depth discussion about why this is happening and what can help. There could be a variety of reasons why someone may have abdominal surgery. Perhaps you've had a hernia repair or an appendectomy a C-section, a hysterectomy, an abdominoplasty, or some other variety of reasons why they've had to do an abdominal procedure. But in either case, there's two procedures that they usually do. Either an open abdominal repair or surgery where they open up the abdomen to basically fix the issue or something called a laparoscopic procedure where they're basically using instruments that they can basically place down into small openings or holes or portals within the abdomen to basically do the procedure which is less invasive. However, with both of these procedures, many people can end up with continued abdominal pain. And the reason for this that I've seen in my years of experience is typically due to adhesions or scar tissue that ends up forming after you've started the healing or repair process after the surgery. So this picture here is basically a cut of the abdomen. Basically the abdominal muscles and the skin has been taken off so that you can see the inside of the organs. You can see the stomach and the liver and the GI organs and down here you can see the bladder. Now I'm going to pick something very common that and many women have C-section. So if you've had a C-section, and again, this pertains to any abdominal surgery, but we're just taking this as an example, is that when you have a cut across and through the abdomen, once they repair everything up, the body senses that as a type of injury. And just like any injury, for instance, when you have a cut on your finger, that cut ends up needing to heal. It ends up forming scar tissue. And that scar tissue or scab, what some people call it, can also form in the same way internally on your organs. So this white that you end up seeing throughout this area is kind of indicative and exemplifying scar tissue. And that scar tissue, just like a scab, is not your normal tissue. It ends up being less flexible and it doesn't have good blood flow. And so what ends up happening is that scar tissue and the adhesions can end up over time becoming tight. And it doesn't necessarily start to become tight or that sensation of tightness to yourself right after surgery. Sometimes it can start happening two weeks later. And over time, actually over two years, that scar tissue can continue to tighten. And when this scar tissue tightens, it can actually end up causing basically inability for these organs to move well. And so if you've had a C-section, for example, you might end up having some scar tissue that ends up affecting the bladder. And if that scar tissue becomes tight around the bladder, now that bladder doesn't have the ability to move as well as it typically does. Every single organ in the body has movement, has natural movement. When you bend forward, when you bend backwards, when you run, any type of movement, organs are moving around each other because they basically have to have that mobility for freedom of movement. And so if you have scar tissue now on that bladder, it's not gonna move as well. And if it doesn't move as well and it doesn't have the freedom of movement, it can actually end up causing you what feels like organ related issues, but there's actually nothing wrong with the organ. So for an example with the bladder, is if that is scarred and adhered down, it can end up causing symptoms like urinary frequency where you feel like you have to pee all the time, or it could even make you feel like you have chronic UTIs or urinary tract infections that are happening, yet you've gone in and had blood tests done or lab work done and nothing is coming out positive. For an example, this scar tissue sometimes not only affects the bladder, but in some people due to genetic variability, some people's scars can adhere more than others or keloid is, a, is another word that maybe some of you have heard of. And so what ends up happening is that scar tissue not only just affects the bladder, it can actually start affecting and pulling on other organs. For example, the GI system, other organs that are close within that organ. And so then you can end up with things like constipation 
or you can end up with even like issues that can end up causing sexual dysfunction if the scar tissue starts to affect even the organs of the genitals. And so if you guys are having any of these symptoms, just know that this is most likely a contributor to what's going on if all other causes have been ruled out. The other thing that scar tissue can do is that you have lots of nerves in this area as well. And if those nerves also get wrapped up in that scar tissue, most nerves, when they're not happy, are gonna end up causing you pain. So we've had lots of patients that end up coming in with things like scar sensitivity, where they feel that there's an intolerance to clothing. They can't especially wear anything tight, or even they end up having discomfort when they just bump up against things, or even putting a sheet on themselves at night. And that nerve pain can end up being wrapped up in all of that scar tissue and basically causing that hypersensitivity that might be going on. Now there's a whole list of other downstream things that can happen with abdominal scarring, but these are just some of the common symptoms that we end up finding. But some of the other things just to think about is if you have developed any type of like hip issue or back issue, tailbone issue, rectal pain, genital pain, pain with sitting even, if you're experiencing any of those symptoms after having an abdominal surgery, then again, this can also be due to the adhesions that form. And the reason why that happens is because adhesions can also affect all the surrounding muscle within the pelvis, the abdomen, the low back, the hip, and even beyond. I've even had other people that have come in that end up having shoulder problems due to a lower abdominal surgery. So if you guys are having these symptoms, then we're gonna talk a little bit more about what you need to do to treat it. At our clinic here at Rebalance Physical Therapy, the treatments that we often incorporate in order to help reduce pain and improve movement starts with taking care of the scar tissue and actually trying to get better movement within that scar tissue. There are specific techniques that are directly geared towards managing and improving the mobility of that scar. But then, like I had mentioned before, there are also other techniques where we actually have to move the tissue around the organ. And so if there is adhesions around the bladder or the GI system or any of the other organs that are being affected from that scar tissue, now we actually have to improve the mobility of that tissue that is connected to the organ. And last but not least is that even though you're treating the scar tissue and you might be treating the organs that are now adhered because of that scar tissue, remember we talked about how muscle, all the surrounding muscle around the abdomen, the low back, and the hips, et cetera, are involved and can end up also contributing to the pain that you might be feeling. And if we look at this model here, you can see that the abdomen has many connections indirectly and directly to other muscles around the hip, the pelvis, the low back, and say the inner thighs and up and down the whole entire body that can be affected. And so treating the muscles surrounding this area is equally as important as treating the scar tissue itself. If you're finally ready to get rid of this abdominal pain, then check out our description box below where we have online programs, in-person consultations, as well as telehealth consultations where we can help you start moving your body in the right direction.